Hello. Hello. Hi. I don't know where everybody else is. Anthony, I can't see you. Wait a minute. There we go. I should be able to see him. Where'd he go? Where are you, Anthony? Hi, Tatiana. How you doing? I'm doing good. You're doing good? Yeah. You know <laughs> Uh, somewhat, yeah. <laughs> Did, was it easier once they got their books in there to show yeah. you? Yeah. Okay. I know sometimes it can be kind of overwhelming at first, mm -hmm. but once you get it done, well, you learn, you figure it out. It's not so bad. Adriana, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Huh? <laughs> There we go. <laughs> Are you getting the hang of your notes now? <laughs> I can't hear you. <laughs> Adriana? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Athena. Hi, Athena. Hi, Lena. I got everyone else in here. Okay. Oh, no wonder. There's like, I admitted him once. I guess they got bumped. That's why it didn't come up. Did you get bumped, Anthony? <laughs> Did you get bumped? Hello. Hi. <laughs> Jocelyn. Okay. Um, are you cold, Anthony? I'm always cold. Well, yeah, I'm cold. Oh. I'm cheap. I don't be running the heater. <laughs> I don't like to either because it makes me chew. I get stuffy noses and runny noses when the heater's on. I get nauseous like, and too warm. So yeah, I'd rather wear a sweater or something than yeah. <laughs> exactly, where you can regulate it. Yeah, because it gets too hot, then it gets too cold, and I'm up and down with the heater, and I'm like, no, 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 that's too much money. <laughs> that's yep. Way too much money. How was everybody's weekend? Good. 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 Me too, it was short still. <laughs> I don't know what they do. They need to add an extra day. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're gonna be adding an extra hour to your theory, you guys, starting next week. So okay. the time change is gonna be like from 12.30 to 2.30. 12, okay. Okay. So and I'm gonna make sure that um, everybody gets that notice when they go into school this week. Okay, so okay. it'll be 12.30 to 2.30. Because they're wanting me to go so fast in, in your theory, and I can't really go that fast on certain subjects, you know? Right. So we've gone through them pretty much once for most of you. So in order to keep it where it's supposed to be, we're going to um, <laughs> add you an extra hour like we do with my SDs, because I have to do two hours with them in the mornings. So there's from eight from 11 to, or 10 to 12, then I'll grab something to eat and at 12.30, I'll have you guys, okay? Okay, uh, are we still on chapter one today or? Yes, we yeah, we're gonna finish that one up. I know they gave you chapter two, right, for notes? Yeah. Right, 
Okay. So I'm going to try and finish this one today, and that way uh, I'll give you a test for it that you can take on Thursday when you come back. It's an easy one because it is an easy chapter. So it'll probably only be like 20. Effective communication today. Are we what now? Uh, are we doing uh, 1.2 effective communication? Yeah, but we, did, we didn't finish 1.1 just yet. Oh. We stopped off at like ergonomics, right? Or at prevent foot and leg problems on page 21. That's where we left off. Page 21. Because we had half of your, your test questions, right? I went through or something like that. Oh, yeah. Last week. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. So you did take chapter 15, right? You already took that one. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah, okay. That's what I thought. So I make sure I get everybody, you know, like, Max. Okay. I wish there was a way I could put like up on the, the screen, like the page and everything, <laughs> you know, at the beginning. And so that when you come in, all you have to do is see that. I mean, that'd be a way. Uh oh. It's just because all the mics are on. That's why it's just because all the mics are on. That's why it's acting funny. I'll have to have you turn off your mics. <laughs> okay. So we got two more. Okay. That's better, right? Mm hmm. Okay. Good. All right. It's just you guys forget you have them off too when you go to talk to me. <laughs> All right. One, three. I'm going to give them a couple more minutes. For those of you that are already in the room, you're going to be on page 21, where it says prevent foot and leg problems. And I think I, I reminded you last week about a lot of these are going to be the same thing as like the back problems and the hand problems and the rest. They're going to be a lot redundant information to be put in there, just an FYI. <laughs> Sometimes I would just write see, see foot and leg problems, see wrist problems, you know what I mean? If they were the same information. Because like one of them says, um, uh, adjust the height of the chair. That's on a couple of them, right? Adjust the mm -hmm. height of the chair. So things like that, you don't have to continually put them in there over and over again. All right. So also another thing that's going to be done is next week you're going to start your two hour theory instead of just one hour and it'll go from 1230 to 230 okay. So make a note of that, that I'm going to make sure that you guys have it on the board in your freshman class when you come back to school here. Okay, just so we can get your theory in there, all of it. Who did I just let in the room. <laughs> Me Elizabeth. Okay, thank you, honey. <laughs> I actually have a class from uh, 12 till 1. Excuse me? I have a class from 12 till 1. Actually, it's Mac. Oh, um, at the high school? Um, yeah. Okay. I'll let her know. Okay. Has anybody else got classes in the afternoon? No? So if I moved it from like um, one to three, would that be okay for everyone? Mm -mm. No, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Okay. I'll be at work. All right. So you might have to keep it at 1230. You just have to join us, I guess, uh, Max, when you're out of your class. Does that make sense? Yeah, I can join as soon as possible. Okay. All right. Because it's going to get close here where everybody's going to have to come back to the school. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. They start to. Yeah, that'll it. be different for me. Like, they'll allow me to miss it. Okay. All right. Have I got everyone in here? It's 106. So I'm going to take roll. And if I didn't call your names, <laughs> I don't know. Okay. See, Anthony, Venetia, I've got you. Tatiana, I got you. Adriana. Got you. <laughs> Athena, got you. Lena, got you. Jocelyn, got you. Abby, got you. Max, I've got you. Ava, 
I've got you and Elizabeth. Anybody else I did not call? Everybody's been called? Samantha. Samantha, ha, ha ha, there you go. H, right? I see you. <laughs> your, your name's across your face. So. <laughs> All right. So then I should have 13, 12, 1, 2, Yep, got all of them in here. Okay. So if you haven't heard, next week it's going to start at 12:30 and it'll go until 2:30. Your theory's now been bumped up for a two-hour theory. Now you're joining it with my Essies who have two-hour theory every day. All right. You won't be with them though. Theirs is from 10 to 12. All right. So we're on page 21 in your study guide. And it's down where it says prevent foot and leg problems, right? Yes. Okay. So that first one is, these are your bullets you're going to put in there. Do not stand for too long. Okay. While you're writing that in, I'm going to try and bring it up to page here for my sharing the screen. Okay. So. Let's see if it has. Okay, that's not this page, it's the next one, it should be. There it is. Okay, so this is what's going into those little bullets for preventing foot and leg problems. Okay, so it says avoid long periods of standing and I gave you don't stand too long. Okay, um, it says using shock absorber inserts, that's in there. Okay, using support hose or socks. Ladies, do you know what support hose is? Kind of hard, it's not your generation, <laughs> but it's pantyhose, I guess, that has, a, it's like a thicker. Are they kind of like compression it. socks? Yeah, they're like pressure socks, but they're like pantyhose that do that, okay? So that keeps your legs from getting varicose veins because you're gonna be standing on concrete. I tell you right now, buy one of those mats that people have, you've seen them at the hairdressers, okay, that they're standing on to keep that underneath there because it takes a lot of pressure off your lower back when you're standing for long periods of time. Okay, so. Um, the next one is use those shock absorbing inserts, right? You want to avoid shoes with high heels or pointed toes. Not a wise idea, okay? Because it's going to mess up your feet altogether. Use a cushion mat, floor mat, which is what we've got, okay? And utilize that hydraulic chair. It can be adjusted at least five inches. So instead of you bending over like this or squatting down trying to get to someone, use that height adjustment, okay? And then just lock it. So you just pump up and then you pull up on it, okay? So you're pumping with your bottom of your foot and then you use the top of your foot to lock it up, okay? You'll see us get a little upset, some of the teachers, if we see a little child spinning in one of those because what it does is it messes with the hydraulic and those chairs are not cheap. You may think it's a school and they're cheap, but those cheap chairs cost us $800 a piece. <laughs> so, and that's just for the school ones. <laughs> So you don't want them messing up the hydraulics on there. So you should have six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Has everyone got all of those in there? Yep. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. You just let me know with thumbs up. Who said not yet? Because I can't see you all, remember? Um, I do. Oh, Tatiana? Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. I get like four of you <laughs> in a slide and that's it. And I just have to keep flipping it. Okay. I wish I could see more of you, even if I try to do this, I wonder if I could bring it over. No, that's not gonna do it either. Yeah, if you do the no. little square with all the dots, you'll get six. I'll get what, six? You'll get six. Mm -hmm. No, not that. Uh, on your on your okay. screen for the. That's, I, I don't know this that one. Right here, I don't. I don't have six on mine. It should I have be. A two page view. Yeah, where you see the little faces. If you click uh -huh. on the four squares, it should show like one bar, a bigger bar, two bars, and like a spreadsheet looking thing. Okay. If you hit no, that. No, all I have is I have one, two, and three. One like a line and then a, a bar and then two bars. That's all I got. Oh, okay. On mine. 
I got a cheap computer. <laughs> anyway, I wish I could. All right, is anyone still writing? Okay, I'm going to change the page there. Okay, and this should be, come on, go in there. All right, should be prevent hand and wrist problems by, again, here's that adjusting of the head, height of the chair, utilizing the swivel of the chair, meaning turning them around, okay? Tilting the client's head. Here's really one I love, okay? This happens every single time. I'll tell someone to tilt forward, okay? Or tilt down and they go like this. I go, <laughs> so I learned a long time ago that when I want someone to tilt their head forward or down, I'll give them a little push the direction I want them to go because, and I asked a client one time, I go, why did you do that? And they're like, because I thought you said you wanted me down like towards you. And I go, no, no. <laughs> okay, so now I just use the back of my hand to gently tilt their head the way I want it to, <laughs> to move. Okay, you also want to use sharp shears. Mm -hmm. Get that fit in your hand because some of those are too tight or they're too loose. Use procedural techniques that help you keep your wrist straight and use an armrest at a manicure station. Do you know what they mean by procedural techniques that help you keep your wrist straight? No one? All right, I'm gonna show you a little example. When I was in school, I was doing my solid haircuts and I would bring my hair down this way and then my fingers went like this. They teach you now to cut like this, okay? So that your hands stay straight. And also if you think about it, if you're right-handed and I'm coming around a corner, what ends up happening is my, left hand starts to curve. And so I end up being one side shorter than the other, okay? And it's just the opposite if you're left-handed. So if you cut like this all the way around on that solid, you won't have that short side. It'll actually be even. So it's a lot easier to learn how to do that. Excuse me. Yeah. Not yet. Have her try again. Okay, bye. Somebody that's still saying they're trying to get in. I go, she hasn't tried to get in yet. Okay. So do you understand what I mean by holding your hands the correct way? Okay. Because no one taught me that, okay, when I was in school and I literally had to compensate because I always knew I was gonna get one side shorter. So I'd leave that side a little longer <laughs> until, I really started teaching and I was learning to cut this way more like a pivot point way because I wasn't taught pivot point, I was taught the lady and it made sense. There she is, okay. She's in now. Isabella. Okay, we got you in there, Isabella. Let me know when you guys have gotten this all in. I know some of you have, but others haven't. I'm looking around to see who's still writing. <laughs> okay. Tatiana, you still writing, hun? No, I'm good. Okay. Does anybody still need that up on the screen? Okay. And we're going to move down to preventing shoulder problems. Okay. And here it is again, adjusting the height of the chair, <laughs> using the swivel of the chair, tilting the client's head, holding your tools so you don't have to raise your arm. That's another thing. When you work in this vicinity, like where your shoulders are, when your arms go straight out, you're not tired. But when you have to raise your arms like this and try and do something, someone's hair, that's when you get tired. Any woman <laughs> that blow dries their hair with long hair gets tired after you try to do it because you've got your arms up like this. So if you keep your hands and your arms in your working area, which is straight out in front of you, you won't get tired. So either pump that chair up or lower that chair so it's comfortable for you. And it says extending the client's arm when doing nails. Have them come forward to you instead of you bending over the, the desk trying to work with your back messed up back here because you're going to be doing this on a like hourly basis, right? She's only going to be there for a little time. 
So she can handle moving her arm towards you. It doesn't bother them. But if you had to do it for every client, you wouldn't make it through the day. And the other one is to use your armrest when you're doing a manicure, same thing, okay? Having that client feel comfortable underneath and then you having her extend her arm out towards you. Okay, I'm going around just to see who's still writing. No one's still writing? That's amazing. Josh Long, you still writing, hun? Are you still writing on the screen? No, you already have this information? Jocelyn, just yes, yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, I'm going to turn the page to effective communication. Okay. Oh, they're gonna get to self check first, okay. All right, so number one, to prevent fatigue, the recommended number of hours of sleep is blank to blank. Someone give me the answer to that one. Eight. Six to eight, correct. This is true or false. Exercise helps you look, feel, and work better. True. True. Okay. Three, the science that deals with healthful living is referred to as? Etiology. Hygiene. Oh. I think it's hygiene, oh. <laughs> but we'll, we'll check our answers, okay? All right, four is to reduce body odor, you should bathe regularly and use soap and apply. Deodorant. Deodorant, <laughs> right? Some of us, that is not an option, <laughs> it's necessary. Five, bad breath is also known as? Halitosis. Halitosis, okay. Contouring with dark colors narrows. While contouring with light colors. Widen. Widen, okay. Seven, a science that looks at the efforts of how you do your work and the body movements used while you perform that work is called. Ergonomics. Ergonomics. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Go, here's our answers again. Yep, six to eight. That was a true exercise. And hygiene was that science that deals with healthful living. Okay, um, deodorant, we knew that one. Halitosis, contouring with dark narrows while contouring with light broadens. Okay, and a science that looks at the effects of how we do our work and the body movements is ergonomics. Okay, here's our facts. Rest and relaxation, sleeping less than six to eight hours causes your body to become fatigued and not function properly. Exercise, a lack of exercise limits your body's ability to look and feel and work better. And nutrition, a balanced diet is essential for your personal and professional well being. We all know that if we're not eating correctly and we're out partying all night, we don't feel that great the next day, now do we? <laughs> all right, hygiene. Personal hygiene routine is essential if you expect clients to enjoy their appointment with you. Your image, beautiful hair is clean, <clears throat> excuse me, healthy hair, healthy glowing skin is equally dependent on good nutrition, exercise and rest. So the image for your hands, they must be smooth, soft, immaculately clean and well manicured. Take proper care of your feet because you're gonna be standing on them. Dress for success okay, and maintain good posture to enhance physical well being and reduce fatigue. Remember, ask yourself as you're going out the door would I hire this person the way that they look? Okay, ergonomics you work with your back straight. Okay, you avoid overreaching. You adjust the chair height. You have elevate your foot on a stool or change positions frequently when you're standing for long periods of time and use a cushioned floor mat. Be nice if they just had nice, you know, soft flooring for us, but they don't. <laughs> it's a business. All right, ergonomics, wear support hose and comfortable shoes when you're shock absorbing inserts and avoid 
high heels and pointed toes. An old student book. Um, tell her I'll call her that after class. Okay. Okay. Um, use sharp shears that fit in your hand. Be careful with those sharp shears. <laughs> All right. Use procedural techniques that help you keep your wrists straight. And manicure stations should have armrests for the clients and the salon professional. Remember, because you don't want to overreach her to get her arm. Okay. That concludes that part of it, but let's go through your book here on effective communication, correct? Correct. I'm going to, this is 1.2, let me get rid of this screen here. And I'll bring up the other screen for you. It's taking its time. Do, do. I wish sometimes I could set it up on three different little um, <laughs> tabs. Okay. It's almost there. It opens up here, I'll give you the screen. Okay, let me share the screen. And I'll get my slides up there. There we go. So that effective communication, every time you exchange ideas, thoughts, or feelings with someone, this is communication. Let's wait for this screen to come on. All right. I think you guys' phones work faster than my computer. <laughs> So did you have page 22 now set up? And if you have effective, if you have effective communication, I'll get you to fill that part in while I'm talking here. Every time you exchange an idea, thought or feeling with someone, okay, that's what communication is. Well, we're still waiting for it to download. Can you repeat that one more time? Uh -huh. Every time you exchange ideas, thoughts, or feelings, okay, that is communication. I should pull it up on the screen here for you in just a moment. No, it just goes into nonverbal, huh? <laughs> okay, so effective communication is every time you exchange an idea, thought, or feeling. This is, we are communicating with someone. On the nonverbal communication, though, these are messages that are exchanged without speaking, okay? And you should have like a body language and a meaning, correct? In a little bubble right below that? Yep. Okay, so we're gonna do this just like the way I'm saying it. Smiling, and then you're gonna put approval, okay? Because it communicates approval in the meaning part, okay? Nodding, which is the second one, right? It means agreement. It's not in the order on the screen, but it, this is the way you're gonna put it in there. The handshake, okay, is self-confidence. Leaning forward means you're interested in someone or what they have to say. 
And then arms crossed on the chest usually means disapproval. How many times have you seen a teacher stand there like this and you're like, I think I'll go find another teacher to <laughs> check my doll. <laughs> okay, so it kind of makes people go away from you when your hands are crossed like this. So you wanna be open. Okay, so the first one was approval, agreement, self-confidence, interested and disapproval. Okay. And it kind of gives you a little picture there, which would, would be positive body language and negative body language. <laughs> okay. Everyone get those in there? Underneath it, it should say verbal communication. Am I correct? Yeah. Okay, so this is what it's going to be. The tone or infliction of your voice the level and rate of your speech all play an important role. So sometimes when you, you're speaking to someone, they'll say, well, that's not what you said. And it's like, no, that's exactly what I said, but it wasn't the tone that I used, okay? So the tone has a lot more sometimes to do with what, more than what you said, right? I just asked you if you passed your test. Oh, did you fail your test or something? You know what I mean? It's the way people present it to you. So you have to be careful sometimes. Grammar, Okay, which is right below. You want to practice appropriate grammar by avoiding the use of double negatives, slang words, or words whose true meanings aren't appropriate. So let me give you an example of one of these little slang words. One of the students was doing another lady's hair. I mean, I can't even think of the name that she used. That used cool or something like that. And the lady asked her if she wasn't feeling well because she misunderstood what they were saying by the slang. I'm trying to think of the word that she used. Now it just went blank in my head. But I know we use a lot of different slangs just when we're talking to each other. And you know you, you do, but you might want to use the same type of language that your customer is speaking. Okay, so that she understands what type of information you're giving her. Does that make sense? Kinda? Yeah, it does. No? It does. <laughs> okay. I'll come, I'll come back with that word <laughs> that I'm trying to think of. <laughs> okay. Has everyone got those three in there for that? Because basically, this is the deal. If you use your grammar correctly, okay, you can clearly communicate what you're trying to say to someone. That's and if you're I not think. clearly, yeah, if you're not clear on it, it's not going to be the same. All right. We're going to move into the keys to effective two way communication. All right, and each one of these are going to be a bullet that is in your study guide. So the very first one is to present a pleasant greeting. Hello, my name is Mary, okay? You wanna use tact, which means saying the right thing without making someone feel bad, okay? Express your ideas clearly. Define the purpose of your communication. Why am I talking to you, okay? Know the importance of your ideas. Be aware of your environment. A lot of people do not do that. I've seen in the shop where a stylist and a customer were talking about another client who her sister just happened to be in the chair next to her listening to the whole thing. So you don't know who might be listening, okay? Be aware of your communication on that, okay? Watch your overtones, okay? The way you say that to someone. And if you're not sure about something, consult with others. You know, like if you're not sure on a color, you know, take someone in the back room, you know, another stylist and say, hey, what do you think? Is there a different way I should do this? Talk with your friends, all right? And the last one is to be a good listener because God gave you two ears and one mouth. Use less of one and more of the other, okay? That's pretty much <laughs> what I got to say on that part. Because if you listen, you'll hear a lot more information than you think you do, okay? But if you're talking, you miss all of it. 
it's like the number one thing to do is to listen to your clients. Now it came to me, I'm told you. Okay, remember that little slang thing I was talking about? <laughs> One of the students said, oh, that looks sick. And the little old lady said, oh, do you not feel well, hon? So because oh. she used a slang, there, that sounds a little bit better than my last one, huh? <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, it's not Yeah, you know, because she didn't know, she didn't yeah. know. So that's what I mean by keyword, your slang words, you've got to be careful. <laughs> I'm like, I messed that one up all the way at the beginning. <laughs> hey, I have to contribute it to my age, okay, you guys? <laughs> At least I got the, the <laughs> idea to you. Um, does anyone have anything that they want to add to that about two-way communication? No. No? All right. Anyone still writing? No, okay. So here's your Two-way communication, avoid discussing these topics. We don't really have that in our tech, our study guide, but you always wanna avoid religion, politics, personal problems. You can listen to theirs, just don't give yours. <laughs> Other clients' behavior and information given to you in confidence, okay? But those religion and politics are the, the big ones because they can start an argument so fast it's not, it'll make your head spin. <laughs> so you wanna stay away from those topics. In sports sometimes, okay, when it comes around for like, you know, Super Bowl or when it comes around for, um, you know, the playoffs, there's always people in there getting up excited about it. All right, so it says, number a separate sheet of paper from one to six and indicate whether the action is nonverbal or verbal, but we're just gonna walk through this, okay? Talking on the phone, nonverbal or verbal? Verbal. Uh, verbal. verbal. Okay. <laughs> Nodding your head. Nonverbal. Non Smiling. Nonverbal. Non Yelling. <laughs> Verbal. Verbal. Okay, shaking hands. Nonverbal. Non non okay, and saying hi. That's verbal. verbal. That's verbal. Good. <laughs> See, I had to play interaction with you guys here, okay? All right, here's the true and false. Politics is something you should talk <laughs> to every client about. False. Good. <laughs> Tact is not necessary when you're dealing with clients. That is false. False. As well. false. Yeah. If a client talks negatively about a coworker, you should agree or offer more details. False. false. <laughs> you want to just make sure that doesn't even continue after that point. Okay. Avoid talking with clients about your personal problems. That's true. true. That's true. Yeah. You want to make sure you're not doing that. Okay. This is a really <laughs> a fast little section. So you've got all these right. Verbal, nonverbal, nonverbal, verbal, nonverbal, verbal. Non -verbal. <laughs> all right. Politics, no, you don't want to talk about that. Tactics. Um, we've got all of those correct. All right, let me see if I have to pull this up. Oh, still the facts. Nonverbal communication. These are important messages exchanged without speaking. This nonverbal communication is called body language. Verbal communication is tone or inflection of your voice, level, and the rate of speech. These are key components of verbal communication. You want to practice the appropriate grammar. Okay, think of it sometimes if you're speaking to your grandmother, would you be talking like, you know? That way, that's basically the best way I can describe it. It's like you wouldn't want someone else talking to your, your grandmother like that, nor should you. All right, two-way effective communication. Present a pleasant greeting, right? Express your ideas clearly. Be aware of your environment. Watch your overtones. Consult with others when necessary. And always be a good listener. Okay, that's the end of that one. So let's move on to the next part of this. Okay, which is three. Okay, so give me a second and I will get the next slide up. Um, and 1.3. 
When you finish these chapters, do you um, go on and do your like 1.1, 1.2, the challenges online? I do. I feel like that's yeah, the best way that's to study for the test. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And because when I go through the test questions too, I, I kind of give you those also, but yeah, that's the only way to do that. Because it just reinforces the answers, correct? Correct. No. Here we go. It's coming up. Okay. This is going to be on human relations. I don't have time to go through test questions. How about that? <laughs> You're like, <"A> what? <laughs> like I said, there's going to be like 15 or 20 on that one. It's not going to be very much. Okay. It's just so. Downloading. I'm going to share the screen with you. Okay. Page unresponsive. Let's see if this came up three. Would this be three? Is mine still spinning, so I don't even know. Come on. It's only a page and a half in your book still. Okay, you should have like two little dots where it says personality, correct? Like square. In your study guide on page, huh? There's on page 23? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that first bullet or that first little dot there, it's gonna say human relations is getting along with others. That's what you can write in there, okay? Well, I'm waiting for this to come up. There you go. Human relations is getting along with others. Faster this part here. I just didn't load it the first time. Okay. So the psychology of getting along with others, the factors influencing human relations in the workplace include that personality, teamwork, and ethics. But what I want you to put in there is human relations is getting along with others. Okay. The second bullet is it's defined as the outward reflection of your inner feelings, thoughts attitudes and values. Let's see if it's right here on this next page. If it isn't, I'm going to repeat it slowly for you. Okay, here it is. So under personality, which is number two, okay, it's the outward reflection of your inner feelings, thoughts, attitudes, and values. Okay, I'm going to put that in on that second little bullet there. Okay, basically, it's going to be the sum total of the emotional and behavioral, behavioral characteristics that make you unique. But I'm gonna give you what to put in there. So don't write that in there just yet. Just your outward reflection. Okay, you should have like, it looks like four little bubbles and then a, a single one, right? In the very minute, big middle of it says positive personality traits, correct? Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to start on the left little balloon or whatever you want to call that. The very first one, it should say good sense of humor. Okay, you're going to write in the good sense of humor. Let's see if these come up.
This is just a little thing. Okay. Right underneath that is a positive attitude. Okay, that's what I want you to write in there. Is a negative. In the same box? In the same like circle, yeah. So the first little circle there, it's good sense of humor. And then the second one was positive attitude. Okay. So none of this is going in there just yet. It's just talking about this. Okay, we're gonna go back to this. All right, the bullet, the circle right next to it, the very first one you're gonna put considerate nature. Considerate nature. Okay, the next one in that same bubble is emotional control. Okay, you don't wanna be screaming at somebody, you wanna have a cool, even tone. All right, the very bottom on the left-hand side, that circle, you should have friendliness. You wanna be friendly. And the second bullet is vitality, okay? You wanna have an upbeat personality, okay? That's basically what they're asking for. What was the first part? Friendly, friendliness. So you want to be friendly with people and you want to have vitality, which is the second one, okay? That upbeat personality is what they're basically getting at. Okay, and then on the right in that bubble, the first one's good manners, because we can always use good manners. And the second one is flexibility. If I'm gonna hire you, can I depend on you, you know, occasionally to switch schedules with me? <laughs> you wanna be flexible. Okay, and then you're gonna turn the page to 24. Okay, your study guide. It's not even going through this part here. Except that habits are learned and reinforced through events in your environment. You wanna limit your potential for success when they are unattractive. So it usually takes us about 30 days to break a habit. Okay, so think about that if there's something that you wanna break that you don't like about yourself. Okay. Habits of success are going to be maintaining attendance and punctuality, extending courtesy to your fellow employees, and connect with your client. Okay, that's not in your book either. <laughs> All right, your teamwork, this is in your book. Okay. All right. Very first part before you put those two little bullets in, it's going to say the existence of a harmonious environment depends heavily on teamwork. So you can write in there a harmonious salon environment depends heavily on teamwork. That's your first bullet. Okay. On which page is that? Excuse me? On which page? I can't see it. On 24. Can you turn the page? Are you um, not on 24? I'm on the 24, last... but it's human relation right. 1.3. Right. We went through that. That was good sense of humor, right? Uh, yeah, I did that. And then the next one is... Uh... Positive attitude. Oh, yeah. Team. Yeah, yeah, sorry. That's okay. Do you have them all now? Yeah, I got it, yeah. Okay, that's all right. Okay, so your teamwork on the next page is gonna be that first bullet where it says a harmonious salon environment depends heavily on teamwork. Okay. The second one, even though it says an individual member of a team can bring certain characteristics that have a positive influence on the group, that's not what I want you to write in there. What I want you to write in there is keeping your work area clean Okay, is usually set forth by a regulating agency. That's what I want you to put on the second line or the first bullet there, okay? Keeping your workstation clean is usually set forth by the regulating agency. Do you remember who your regulating agency is? 
Any of you? The regulating agency is wherever you work for, right? It's the regulating agency is the Board of Barbering and Cosmetology. So they're the ones that, where the, you get your license from. They're the ones that will come out and um, do site visits and check for disinfection and sanitation problems. That's who our regulating agency is. A lot of times in your textbook, it'll say, check your regulating agency. The reason why that is in there is because your textbook is used for 50 states, okay? But not all states can do everything that's in this book. So it, that's why they usually put it in there. Like certain things we can't do in California, may, they may be able to do in Nevada. You know, so if you ever see that in there, you'll have to check to see if we're allowed to do that procedure in this, this state. Okay, um, the second bullet now, okay, you're going to write the keywords for teamwork are consideration and cooperation. So the keywords for teamwork are consideration and cooperation. And basically the little bubbles on the screen say respecting confidences is essential for an atmosphere of trust and sharing. Then keeping your workstation clean adds visual to an overall atmosphere. And then replacing and storing tools after use avoids potential frustration when another coworker needs the tool. Hopefully they should have their own tools. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully, right? Because uh, it's got to be disinfected. <laughs> okay, so that last one again, just to make sure it has it in there. It's the keywords for teamwork are consideration and cooperation. So you want to be considerate and cooperate with everyone in there. Okay, this ethics. Okay, there we go. That's your consideration and cooperation. All right, ethics, personal ethics, okay, is going to be your own personal system of moral principles and values, because some of you may be different than others, but your professional ethics deal with the proper conduct and relationships with your employer, your coworkers, and your clients. So I'd like you to put personal ethics at the very top where it says ethics. I want you to write both those definitions right there because as your personality will develop, you'll establish your own personal system of moral principles and values, okay? And they become known as your personal ethics. The professional ones or the ones that you choose to work. So you know how everyone likes to say, Ms. Jean, you're talking to me in your teacher voice and not in like a human's voice sometimes. <laughs> okay. My partner will always say, don't talk to me like a teacher, okay? I'm not a, I'm not a student. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not. <laughs> Okay, but it does say in your text, uh, your study guide, right? It says, give examples of the following. And this basically is gonna be your personal ethics, that what they mean to you. So instead of me going through them, I'd like you to fill in what they are to you. So I'm gonna to read to you what mine are, okay? Under respect, I would say, okay, if somebody wants privacy, I'm gonna give it to them. Okay, that's respecting her privacy. Um, courtesy, I would show my clients my best manners and my behavior, right? Um, eagerness to learn would be if my coworker has a new technique to show me, I'm gonna watch, pay attention, okay, and show support. Honesty, I never wanna lie to get my own way. Loyalty, I don't service clients outside of the salon and I don't steal clients from another stylist. Okay, trustworthiness, a coworker has asked you to cover for them. Don't let them down. Okay, you promise to work, show up. Don't just say it's her fault, you know, too bad. She's got to find somebody else. If you've already committed to it, then you, you follow through. And cleanliness and safety. If you nip a client, that's me. Okay, follow the proper safety and blood spill procedures, which I did. I'm just laughing because I did do that by accident. Okay, I'm just going to give it up and let you guys all hear that story. <laughs> all right, and pride in your profession. Show your clients you have pride by doing the best job that you possibly can. And most, most of the time, everyone here does that. When you're working on a client, you feel really bad when it doesn't come out the way that you want it to, don't you? Because you know that that's your work and they're walking around wearing your work. So I have faith that you all can answer these things in the best 
in your best way for your personal ethics, correct? Correct. Right. I'm gonna go through some test questions with you, okay, before we go to, um, to break or before we go for the end of the day, okay? So here we go with the attention again. <laughs> Who's on the top of the list? <laughs> Anthony. <laughs> hey, you guys ready? Yeah. Oh, get out. Okay. Here we go. Um, turning my pages here. Alrighty. Okay. The art and science of beauty, or the art and science of beauty care is defined as, is it charisma, personal hygiene, cosmetology, or ethical conduct? Cosmetology. Yes, okay. Anisha, how many hours of sleep do we need to function properly? Yes. Tatiana. What would make you feel and look and work better? Is it skipping lunch, drinking coffee, sleeping one to two hours a day, or a regular exercise program? A regular exercise program. Yeah, good. Adriana, okay. Which of the following activities helps stimulate blood circulation in your body? Watching TV. What were you saying? Oh, sorry, it's my daughter. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Which of the following activities help stimulate blood circulation in your body? Is it watching TV, reading a book, listening to music, or exercise? Exercise. Correct. Um, Athena. Yep. <laughs> the energy contained in food is measured in degrees, protein content, calories or fat content protein content no it's going to be calories okay the energy contained in food is measured in calories okay it's all right um <clears throat> who's next lena the science that deals with healthful living is known as nutrition ergonomics mental health or hygiene ergonomics the science, the science that deals with healthful living. This one's going to be hygiene. Ergonomics, okay. that's the one everyone gets confused. Ergonomics basically means how you do your work, you know, like how you stand properly, right? How you hold your tools, okay, so you're not hurting your body. That's basically what it means, okay? So if you're not standing correctly and you're not cutting correctly, then you're going to be thrashing up your body. <laughs> That's basically what it is. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, Jocelyn. Okay. Holitosis is the technical term for poor posture, bad breath, poor nutrition, or poor public hygiene. Bad breath. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, Abby. Okay. Um, which of the following statements is true about contouring? Okay. Light colors broaden, dark colors broaden, light color narrows, or light colors can narrow or broaden? Light colors broaden? Yes. Good. Okay. <clears throat> Max, this one's for you. Okay. Um, all of the following activities can help prevent neck and back strain, except, okay, working with your back straight, using a freestanding shampoo bowl, reaching overhead for supplies, or adjusting the height of the client's chair. Can you repeat the question again? Huh? All of the following activities can help prevent neck and back strain, except, the last one, I or can you repeat the last one again? I don't remember. Okay, it's the last one was adjusting the height of the client's chair, and the other one was reaching overhead for supplies. I'm assuming that one, yeah, that's it. Okay, who else have we got here? Eva, okay, 
the exchange of thoughts, ideas, or feelings with somebody is called public relations, personality, communication, or language. Can you say the question again, please? Uh -huh. The exchange of thoughts, ideas, or feelings <clears throat> with someone is called public relations, personality, communication, or language. Communication? Yes, good. Okay, um, Elizabeth. Okay. Um, the psychology of getting along with others is called communication, human relations, physiology, or attitude. Is it human relations? Yes, good. Okay. And I have one more person I haven't called in here. Um, Samantha, no, two, actually, Samantha, right? Okay, this one's for you, Samantha. Okay. Personal ethics include the following attributes except values, personality, moral principles, or negative attitude. Uh, negative attitude. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and the last one is Isabella. Are you still here? Okay, this one's for you. Okay. Um, an outward reflection of your feelings, thoughts, attitudes, and nature defines your hygiene, posture, personality, or sense of humor? Personality? Yep, that's it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you are finished for the day. And this test will be given on Thursday when you come back. Okay? Okay. Alrighty, I'll see you tomorrow. At 12.30 uh, or? <laughs> no, tomorrow's gonna be at what? It'll be one just the rest of the week and next week we'll do. I'll give Next you a whole week's week. notice. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Thank Bye, you guys. Buddy. I'll see you later. <laughs> Be good. <laughs> Bye.